This week I'm here in France on the ground for that big race that happens in July. So I'm going to be taking a look inside of the team's trucks as well as the pros' bikes. But in the meantime, this is the GCN Tech Show. So what's hot in tech this week then? Well, first up, because it's the Tour de France, we do start to see a lot of products getting released and spy shots too of them leading up to the big event. And firstly is a new helmet from Giro. This is the Aether. Now this is a road standard helmet as opposed to a road aero type helmet. So I think this is gonna be a replacement for the synth helmet. Now what I really love about this helmet is that it uses different densities of EPS foam in different areas of the helmet to actually help with both saving weight as well as help with any impacts should you be unfortunate enough to encounter any and sticking with impacts in the unfortunate incident of any impacts well this helmet actually uses the MIPS spherical system so the standard MIPS uh, liner is essentially a plastic inner shell a very very thin bit of plastic which is held on with these rubbery type inserts so if you were to have a crash and hit your head it does in fact reduce the chance of any rotational impact now the MIPS spherical system is actually in between two layers of EPS foam. Now you may ask why would they in fact do that? Well, it's gonna help give you a better fit of the helmet because you're not gonna have that plastic liner on top of your scalp, as well as aiding ventilation. I do like a nice helmet. Now this next really hot bit of tech that I've heard about this week. At first, to be honest with you, I thought it was a late April Fool's joke, but I did in fact speak to Shane Cooper, the owner of the company, and he tells me that this product is in fact totally real. It's a pair of $5,000 socks from company Defeat. $5,000 for a pair of socks. Now these socks are made from, I've been told, a very rare spider silk, the Madagascar Golden Orb Spider to be exact. But why have they done it? Well, apparently, why not in fact? But they have done it in fact for a very good reason. That reason being to celebrate the 20 year anniversary of sponsoring the Quick Step team. So I have heard on good authority that they are actually gonna present the team a pair of these $5,000 socks inside of a nice cabinet that they can then store in their service course headquarters of the team. Now $5,000 for a pair of socks, you're not gonna to wanna to snag a toenail on those, are you? Anyway, more tech for you later on. So this week, having nobody here to argue, uh, sorry, discuss anything with, this week the question is actually gonna go to you at home and I'm gonna read all of your comments to see what you think. But where am I going with this? Well, there is an age old saying with bikes, strong, light, cheap, pick two. Yeah, normally you can't. So I need you to go into a hypothetical situation. Come on, let's do it. So this hypothetical situation, you're about to buy yourself a new bike and there's three different characteristics to look at, in this situation anyway. Lightweight, aerodynamic, and comfortable. So, which one are you gonna sacrifice? Let's start with lightweight. Well, certainly you're gonna notice that climbing and with any accelerations, and also it's gonna be good for your mind too, because after all, cycling is a pretty psychological sport after all, when you're really, really suffering. Aerodynamics, well, we all know what that means, don't we? Maybe it's gonna help you get to the cafe faster, it's gonna help you win a race, or it's just gonna get your average speed up. And then there's comfort, something which, in some cases, doesn't in fact matter. Take, for example, a track bike. Well, you don't really care about comfort on that, do you? Because generally, a velodrome has ever such smooth wooden boards. But the question to you is, which of those three would you sacrifice if you had to? Let me know which one and why in the comment section down below. And next week, I'm gonna use those certainly for a bit of a discussion point. Now, with the Tour de France just a couple of days away, it is very interesting, in fact, to hear that a team is gonna start using a new product for arguably the biggest race of the year. Step forward, Mitchell and Scott, who are going to be using Pirelli's P0 Velo tubular tires for that big race. Now, I'm quite disappointed myself that my stalking qualities have not necessarily been that good because I haven't noticed them in use. Apparently though, they have been using them, but an unbranded version, but I reckon they've probably been using them in training. That's why I've not got to notice it. Anyway, over the next few days, I do hope to get a closer look at them and bring you a closer look too. Now, another product I'm hoping to get a closer 
supposed to look at is in fact joystick tape. And no, that's not something for a games console or anything like that. In fact, it's from company Joystick who sponsor Team Dimension Data. Now this tape apparently is made from a lightweight vibration dampening material. It does in fact have like a chevron style pattern on it, which does help with your grip as well, particularly if you get a bit of sweaty hands. Now they do have a wide range of colors and then there's two special colors coming out as well. Dimension Data Green, obviously for the team, and then also a yellow Model 2. Now, will we see Mark Cavendish get to use that on his bike during this year's Tour de France? Let me know what you think about that in the comments down below. Now, something we looked at earlier on in the week is in fact Cannondale's new System 6 Aero bike. I'm not gonna spoil the surprises. You're gonna have to wait until you finish watching this video to click through and see size look at that brand new bike looks pretty special to me and yet yeah, I reckon we're going to see the riders of EF Education First Draft Pack presented by Cannondale, I think I got that right, use it in this year's Tour de France. Now moving away from the Tour de France and to something quite different, bike packing. And who can forget Sai's little trip out there to Morocco where he had a night under the stars. Now there is in fact a Kickstarter campaign going on at the moment from Aero and they are making some aerodynamic bike packing bags. So if you want to get somewhere faster on your bike packing journey, maybe they are an option for you. Personally, I'm not sure if there is a real need for it because I didn't think bike packing was all about that. Is it? I don't know. Let me know what you think of it down there in the comment section down below. The only time I think really you need to get aero when bike packing is to escape a rainstorm because no one likes to get wet on a bike. Now, sticking with bike packing for a moment, some of you I'm sure will have seen my one by hack video where I turned a bike into a bike which I could use a lower ratio cassette on. So something with a pretty low bottom sprocket on there. I've managed to get a 36 tooth and still using my short cage rear derailleur. But how do they do that? Well, they use those derailleur hanger extenders. And well, there's quite a few companies getting onto the bandwagon of it, I guess, right now. But why are they doing it? Well, none of the manufacturers of group sets actually recommend using a derailleur where it's not suited for. So it's not so a short cage rear derailleur is not suited for one of those 32 or 36 or even more rear cassettes. So Wheels Manufacturing, a company who currently have a massive range of derailleur hangers and bottom bracket options, they've just launched a derailleur hanger extender too. This one puts your rear mech 21 millimeters lower so you too can use an extra low ratio cassette. More tech next week. Competition time, good news. We've got a winner of the Zip 404 unboxing that we did here on the GCN Tech Channel. Brian Catuccio of the USA, you're a very lucky boy. You've got yourself some new Zip 404 wheels. We'll be in touch with you very shortly to arrange delivery. Now, if you missed out on that, well, Brian was the only winner, let's face it. We've got another competition for you to enter, and the link for that is in the description down below, and it's for one of those Toe Peak bike boxes. So make sure you get involved, and maybe you will be as lucky as Brian. Wall of Fame time. I absolutely love this. Gets me reminiscing. So last week, Lasty inducted the Breezer number one, essentially the first mountain bike. I'm going to take it, though, a little bit more recent, only a little bit, though, and it's time for a product that was used by plenty of professionals in secret and also lots of discerning cyclists out there. It's time for the Royce Titanium Bottom Bracket. Oh, yes, a bit of beauty. What is it, though? Well, it's a square tapered bottom bracket. So these were the norm, basically, before we've got now, like, the outboard-style bottom bracket bearings or press fit bearings. Well, what was so special about it then? Well, for a start, there was a titanium axle and the actual cups were aluminium. So there was considerable weight savings compared to a standard component from one of the big group set manufacturers. Then, of course, it came in a massive variety of options. So you had English threads, Italian threads, and axle widths went from 80 millimeters wide up to a whopping 135. So if you had a bike with as narrow Q factor as Graham Obrey or a triple chain set, they had a bottom bracket for you too. And then I think super impressive was the fact it had sealed cartridge bearings, which back in the early 90s was something of a novelty. And in fact, they still make it to this very day and even they incorporate some carbon into the mix too. How cool is that? Now, back in the day, it was 120 pounds, which in the 90s seemed, well, astronomical to be perfectly honest with you. And everyone who had one tended to give the game away by putting a sticker on their bike that came with the actual bottom bracket saying Royce Titanium Bottom Bracket. I always wanted one, I never had one. 
but still, it's an absolute beauty. Now, leave me your nominations for the GCN Tech Wall of Fame down there in the comment section down below, and who knows, maybe we'll pick yours. Bike of the week time. And well, last week, Lasty put two options for you to vote from. And first up was Greg Van Avermaet's Olympic gold medal winning inspired BMC. And that was up against, this was a tough competition actually, up against Mark Cavendish's blinged up Cervelo. And the winner, 65% of the votes, Cavs blinged up Cervelo. This week though, I've got a couple of bikes for you. Right, first up, there is that new Cannondale System 6 Aero bike, their first ever, and it's up against the Argon 18 Gallium Pro of Jakob Fuglsang of Astana. And that has got a very, very fancy paint job indeed, and it's got, well, half of his face painted on it too. So you know as ever, you know the score, vote up there for your favorite, and next week I'll reveal the results. Tell you what, I'm gonna vote for Fuglsang. That bike absolutely bling. Bike Vault time, where we get to rate your bike either nice or super nice using the email address where you submit them on screen right now. So, sadly, I don't have the bell with me because the customs officer at the airport confiscated it. Uh, I personally think he was a really nice guy for doing that because he said he's never heard or seen anything quite as hideous in his life. So, this week, it's either nice or super nice. So let's start then with Jill Kopak, who apparently is an Aussie in London. This is her specialised ruby, which apparently she's had to replace quite a few bits on because it got quite a kicking on a flight one day. So I just want to point out, I think that bike looks absolutely stunning. I do like the curve back on the seat post as well as importantly, the backdrop. Look at the ceiling and the reflection of that tiled floor. Straight up a super nice. Bear with me. Strong stuff, this. Right, next up, Joe Anthony uh, from Lexington in South California. This is Joe's Linsky R240, so it's a titanium bike with some matching Pacenti silver rims, some gold cables. Now, this one, what is letting it down for me, Joe, is, quite honest with you, is the chain set and the way you've placed it. So you have got that right hand crank in line with the seat tube rather than 90 degrees or in line with the down tube. So that one, Joe, that's a nice bike. Right, next up is Matthias from Osnabrück in Germany. This is Matthias's Pinarello Dogma. Beautiful looking bike that. I think that looks like a gorgeous place to be riding your bike in the sunshine with your mates. No other bike in the background, but I reckon Matthias has got some mates. Super nice bike. Oh. Right, now Philippe Carboneau from Quebec, and this is his giant TCR Advanced with an Ortega R8000 group set. That bike, everything about it is spot on. Even got a safety light on the back there, so you're keeping yourself nice and safe out on the road. Uh, it's in a good gear for the photo, the valve stems in the correct position, the chain is, the cranks are absolutely super nice bike, Philippe. And finally, is this one here from Roger Watt from Vancouver. This is his 1965 Urago from France, which has been restored. Basically, he buys new bits when he can to put on it, so it just keeps getting newer and fresher parts on it. So, as you can see, it's completely in time with the period. Perhaps saddle, maybe not quite 1960s. That's a white Rolls. I wasn't around in the 60s, so I couldn't tell you if it was or not. But a Campagnolo group set, he's got a Campagnolo uh, aerodynamic water bottle. Pretty sure that wasn't around then, but it does look the part on this bike. Reynolds 531 frame, Schwalber white tyres. This one looks absolutely stunning. The sort of bike you want to take out on one of those perfect summer's days. Super nice bike. And you lot are really spoiling me this week. Now, as ever, you know what to do. Submit your bikes for the Bike Vault down here using the email address on the screen and include, obviously, your name, where you've come from, and some information about the bike. And who knows, maybe, just maybe, we'll be featuring your bike on the Bike Vault. Now, sadly, it's almost time for the end of the GCN Tech Show this week, but don't worry, we have got a whole heap of content coming up for you this week because, well, it's the Tour de France starting, as well as Eurobike. So, if you haven't already clicked on the bell, notification icon, make sure you do so that you are aware of every single video we're doing. And also remember to like and share this video with your friends too. Don't forget to check out the GCN shop where we've got for July some special yellow branded t-shirts. And then for another great video, this time Simon's look at that Cannondale System 6 Aerobike click just down here.